What's up everyone, welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. Today on the table we're playing some Too Many Bones, trying out solo again. Tried it out yesterday live on twitch.tv forward slash Rob's Gaming Table where we're live doing this. And yesterday we took on the Goblin King and it was with Pickett. You can check that out, it's over at youtube.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table if you want to watch that there. Uh, but today we're taking on Adrelin Paleface uh, solo here with Tantrum. We're actually, the goal of today's stream is to get prepared for our campaign we're eventually going to do on our channel where we play through the giant Age of Tyranny campaign, a bunch of tyrants, and I'm trying out all the gear locks. So to practice for our next um, just regular playthrough with my wife, uh, I want to try out Tantrum, practice it here with your guys' help, and then eventually we'll use it in a two-player playthrough uh, with whatever gear lock she chooses, and we'll take on a different, uh, different tyrant and uh, see how far we can get. So I'm learning Tantrum, so please be patient with me. I'm looking forward to your help from the chat. To help me with Tantrum if you guys know uh, what you're doing with this guy. But uh, yeah, so let's get it set up here. Um, so Drellin, I have the baddies, I believe, all set up in here. Let me just double check. One of my videos accidentally a little orc slipped in, so I gotta make sure I'm seeing only purple, yellow, and green. And it looks that way. All right, so let's flip these over and give them some kind of shuffle here. I don't know how you shuffle poker chips, but <laughs> this is how I'll do it. All right, let's just throw that there. Batty points, number one done and ready. Let's check number five. Yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow, purple is good. Yep, green, purple, 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 yellow. Okay, now so we'll shuffle up the five point baddies. All right, and drop that there. And then the 20 pointers, green, green, purple, gr purple, purple. I guess there's no yellow 20 pointers. Let me just double check with the rest of the 20 pointers that I have, unless I'm missing one, but nope, it's only the scales. So I guess some of the factions don't have 20 pointers or I'm just missing them in my set. I guess I could check the, the book. <laughs> the beautiful components overview here, let's check. Seven 20 point baddies. And it looks like, where if I can get it up there for you guys. Yeah, it looks like we only have two green, two purple, another green, scales, and yeah. So there's no reds, no blues, it looks like. Yeah, interesting. So some of the factions don't bring along 20 point baddies. So let's make sure, yep, these are good. Okay, let's just shuffle these up. Shouldn't have to get to any of the 20 points in a solo scenario, but you never know. Okay, so we got Drellin. Let's take a look at Drellin. Let's do some research here. So he's got eight hit points, five initiative. He's melee, attacks the two weakest gear locks. I'm only playing with one gear lock, so that doesn't matter too much. Uh, he rolls his Tyrant die, he rolls two defense die, and three attack die when he's attacking. That's pretty, pretty, pretty juicy. So we'll throw him up uh, here, because he is a six progress point baddie, and we have 10 days to complete this adventure and destroy the tyrant, cut his head off, and we're gonna throw him here on the uh, adventure mat that will start in Obendar. And we'll work our way up one, two, three, four, five, six progress to get to Shale Fist here, and hopefully take him out. So we'll put him there, and his tyrant die is this guy here which has Poison Enhancer. Uh, set any existing Poison Effect die to three on Drellin's targets, and then Poison two is the other sides. That is targets are Poison for two, place Effect dice on target. So it looks like Poison Enhancer is the more popular, or is it 50? No, I think it's 50-50. Three and three. Okay, 50-50 on that. So we'll throw that die with him up there for dealing with him later. And we'll check, so we did the Tyrant, uh, so it's game length two out of six. We did the Tyrant Batty types, already set that up. And let's, uh, ages ago, Drellin was banished from Obendar to the Poison Marshes for the reasons no one can or is willing to recall. Instead of perishing, however, Drellin remains alive, face twisted and scarred from extended time in the swamps. He is but skin and bones, yet somehow he thrives in the bog. And so he's a poisony guy fighting in the bog. So in the Battle of the Bog, when you do fight him, 
So the reason we're gonna research this, look at it, because you are allowed to look at the card, figure out what's coming up ahead, and that helps you with building your gear lock custom with skills and stats and whatnot on the way to him and looking for loot that might help you out and discarding for better loot and that kind of stuff uh, to help you in that final battle and build up for it. So Battle of the Bog is the final battle if we make it there. Place Drellin in lane one, draw bog type baddies and place them in lanes two and three and we have a party of one so we're doing two one point bog type baddies for that. The battle queue we ignore if a party of one so we're playing solo here it's a little different. Each moved position in this battle requires two decks instead of one because we're in a bog swampy thing so it's harder to move. And he only has one baddie skill. His tyrant skill is Bog Ruler. If any bog type baddies are on the battle mat, he cannot lose HP. Poison has no effect on him also. So that is Drellin Paleface. And we have a tyrant encounter for him, which we will shuffle in as we set up our encounters here. Uh, these are all the solo encounters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yes, there are twelve. We are only playing with. Too many bones core set stuff here other than the added adventure mat and the dice tray that is not in the core set. But everything else we're doing core set, we're focusing on too many bones core set right now. Learning everything in the core set. We're going to play a bunch of tyrant uh, adventures with one, two, three, four maybe gear locks. Uh, if we get some friends roped in to play this, we'll do those on here live and or on youtube.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Tables. You can check those out there. They'll all be in playlists. And once we feel comfortable enough with all the gear locks and we try them all out, find out which ones they like, maybe we'll get some input from you guys, uh, we will then take on the big Age of Tyranny expansion. We also have Gilly and Gilly and Nugget that we have not opened yet. Uh, we'll get to those after we play with some more of the um, core set uh, gear locks and we feel comfortable with them. And then we'll try those and then we'll decide what we're going to take on our first campaign that we will document on YouTube and play some live on Twitch, I'm sure. And we'll go through that and test that out. Uh, okay, so that's shuffled up. Uh, so, days are 10, so we do three less. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, the rest we'll just toss over here so it's kind of reachable. We'll throw the other special encounters that we may need, four to six over there. Um, we'll take the Tyrant encounter, we'll not look at it. I don't remember what it is. I, we played this guy one time. Um, not on video and tried them out. Um, but I will look away as I shuffle so I don't see where the Tyrant Encounter lands up. Kind of sucks it's like blue and it kind of sticks out. Um, but yeah, I'll shuffle these and put them nice and tight. I'll find the cover card down here. All right, put it on top, there we go. And that is that and then the Special encounters one to three that are the same in the course that every time we play we'll we'll just breeze through these here We've read them out a few times on the channel already. Uh, so we'll just breeze through those um, If you want to see what they are go watch any playthrough of too many bones core set and you'll see uh, Eventually in a couple of the expansions they add in new day one to three uh, Encounters to spice it up, but for now it's the same every time we play so I'll put those there on top and Tyrant die from yesterday. We don't need that and got tantrum stuff here. So interesting for setup uh, for tantrum, he starts with some dice on his mat. So they have a little circle here around the little dot. So he is going to start with his rage die number one, and we'll throw that in here. And he starts with axe collector and body count, which are two consumables, but they're just like counters that stay on his mat, is my understanding. So Axe Collector will put at zero here, and body count will throw down here, put at zero. It's kind of like uh, in Lord of the Rings, um, Legolas and it's a Gimli that are doing the whole like destroying guys and marking them on the shields and and uh, keeping track of their, their body count is like a competition. It is, that's kind of what he's got there. So as he destroys baddies himself, does the final killing blow, he will go up in this body count. And then my understanding is it can be spent, uh, it starts on zero, slot 16. And yeah, it goes up by one each time Tantrum personally defeats a baddie. If any time on his turn body count is greater than zero, he may claim this number and gain HP, cannot exceed max, exceed max HP. After claiming body count, reset it to zero 
Fortunate discovery loot has no effect on body count. Oh, okay, okay. Because it does on axe collector. So if you get fortunate discovery of the loot deck, it normally lets you grab a consumable from your backup pile there, which we do have one we can still get, the Horn Horn O the Zerker. Uh, but you could use it to just spend it to put your uh, axes all the way to max, up to three. And these axes you can throw at any baddie. They're not a, a target. You just kind of toss them at somebody on your turn. It's, it's awesome. And it, you do one at a time, and I believe it deals two damage. Yeah, down tick axe collector by one to do two damage to any non-adjacent baddie. Tantrum may use this at any time during his turn. However, it can only be used once per turn. The axe collector backup plan or... Uh, or fortunate discovery loot maxes stat skill out to three axes and if he requires an axe within the mimic profession acquires an axe within the mimic profession you uptick it by one so on he has um actually i can show you on the sheet here so he has on some of his green dice he has this axe plus one or axe with one and that will if you roll that and you use it you exhaust it and then you get to uptick the axe collector die um up a number um okay so we got our starting on the board, let's see. He also has an innate tantrum starts with the rage skill die in slot one of the skills area before battle. Rage is placed in the active slot set to 1.0. His innate, if he gets it, uh, he ignores uh, breakdown occurrences on his die. So I'll explain that as it goes, but basically he's got this little die that upticks every time he attacks a baddie, it goes up by 0.2. You see a little one point whatever in the bottom there. He has three of these dice, so it's like 2.0, 1.0, 3.0, whatever. And they uptick and they have little other little abilities on them that you can spend as you go. And also when he gets, every time he loses an HP, no matter how, uh, for each HP he loses, it also upticks. But the cool part is when it gets to 1.8, uh, which is one before the last value, uh, there's this execute. And with the one die here, I can execute a one point baddie. Or I can, if I have the second die, I can uh, execute, I believe, is the, what it is called. Where did I put it? Um, oh, advance, sorry. Execute's the first one. Advance is what I'm looking for on the bottom there. Uh, I can advance to the second die if I've unlocked it. And then I can start going up, ticking on that, and then I can eventually get to an execute for uh, two point baddie, and then on the third die, a 20 point, or uh, sorry, a five point baddie, then a 20 point baddie on the third die. So we'll see if I can manage this correctly and try to figure this out here. They say he is a harder difficulty, and I think it's because of this whole rage management stuff. And he also starts with zero defense and only four health. So that's a little rough, but uh, you kind of want him to lose health, right? So you can uptick his rage. All right, so let's uh, figure this out here. Okay, I think we are good. I don't think there's anything else to set up for this guy. So we're gonna go with the beginner build and follow this. So the beginner stats here on the reference sheet they recommend uh, get HP to five or six, then take Tantrum's dex to at least four, so he can roll attack dice along with his skills. After that, focus on training attack. If he's playing solo, prioritize one or two defense dice before more dex. So that's, <laughs> thanks for the tip. And then it says, for skills, start with like a kobold to help Tantrum stay fighting longer, then add cripple or way of the wild to debuff his opponent. Once he gets a feel for rage, he should upgrade to rage for increased effectiveness. Okay. So, we'll just focus on the first dice for now. Um, so we are going to start at the Heroic Adventurer mode, which will let us uh, take a free HP to start. It's like the medium difficulty. And so we'll go up an HP. So we'll go from our four we're at to five. And then we get an additional training point, uh, which we will spend... It's saying take an HP of five or six. And take his dex to at least four. Yeah, let's go up to just six health. We'll start out like that. Okay. All right, so let's do the first three days. Uh, day number one on our little counter here. All right, so we're going to squeeze in some last minute self improvement with two training points, or we get some choose two loot to keep and one training point. Um, I'm going to do the two training points, and we'll go up one progress. So for the two training points, uh, let's go with a defense. We'll try, which we roll no dice. We don't even need to test for it. So we'll just take one, and he'll go up one on the defense. And then we'll do the dex. 
Um, we'll just go one up on Dex to four. Okay. And now let's go D number, well, actually recovery phase, sorry. Recovery phase, let's roll a D6, do some scouting. Uh, did I get his health all the way up? Yes. And we got a four. So let's look at a five point baddie stack here. The signal three guy, mm, six health, one attack. So it's a goblin alarmist, two defense. I mean, he could be bringing in baddies, signal three. We could have three more baddies to fight. But he's only rolling one attack die, and he's six. He's ranged, though. I am going to throw him to the bottom. Okay, so we don't have any loot to trade, no lock picking to do, so let's just move on to day two. And in day two, we're doing the usual special encounter number two, which is the battle one. And we're going to do the second option, uh where we just build a baddie queue of baddie points. So we're on day two times one, so it's just two one-point baddies. Okay, we don't know any of them what they are. And this one, we could get two training points if we beat it, and a loot and a training, uh, or a progress point. So let's, let's set it up. So we're gonna go with lane one here is a, so this is kind of bad. This guy's have mischief, so if he rolls bones, he'll be able to knock my uh, rage die away that I'll set up before battle with my innate there. And so he's two damage, or two health, sorry, two health. Going in lane one, he is ranged. So he'll be shooting me from wherever he wants. And he goes at four, so a little high there. I don't know what um, Tantrum's dice, actually, I think it says right on here. Uh, yeah, his initiative die is one three, three fours, two fives that he can roll there. So maybe I can get higher initiative than this guy, but we'll see. Okay. Then the second guy is a bog frog poison two. So he's gonna go in lane two. He is melee, four health. And he goes a little later at three. Okay. And let's roll uh, our initiative die. And we get a four. So perfect. We're gonna go at the top. Okay. Uh, and I'll put myself. I don't know who's more annoying. I mean, could I kill the bog frog? I'm rolling three attack dice. He has four health. Yeah, let's try to take out the bog frog. Maybe we don't get poison. Maybe. Uh, Oh, sorry, three attack dice, one defense is what I can roll. Sorry, did I say four attack? I meant four decks, so I can roll four dice is what I meant. Uh, okay, so let's uh, start it off round one. Uh, myself going first, attack the bog frog. And two hits, two bones. Okay, so I don't even know what his backup plans are. I need to look at that, but I will hit the bog frog, take off two. Okay, let's check his backup plans actually. So at the first, he actually has a one, which I haven't seen before. Uh, he gets angry. You can increase by 0.2 Tantrum's rage, active rage die. Or you can calm down to decrease it by 0.2. So if it gets to that 2.0, it's like broken. Um, and if it's like that at the end of your turn, it actually goes all the way back and resets to 1.0. So you, you want to kind of get to that sweet 1.8 before it hits 2.0. So that's why they give you a way to increase and decrease it. So just in case. Uh, okay. Oh, and I attack, so it actually upticks. So I did roll attack dice, so I get to do that. Three, there's no backup plan. Four, I can set Axe Collector die to three for four bones. That's pretty sick. And then recoup, heal him for four HP for five. That's going to be a little tight to get up that high, especially when I'm not rolling much defense, but it's a thing. And then on six, I can upgrade him to an eight plus one, which I get to ignore that, ignore that breakdown on the dice, which is nice. Okay. Uh, so that is me. Yeah, let's not mess around. We'll get the bones building up. That's fine. Uh, okay. Then I will, uh, do the blue guy. So he is going to roll one attack, one defense. Obviously attacking me, he's ranged, doesn't need to move. And he'll roll a defense, lock that in his active slot. So now I have to break through a shield when I'm attacking him. He'll hit me for one. I lose a health, which brings this up by one. So 1.4 now which I could spend and turn it into two bones if I needed to, if I was desperate uh, to then maybe use the Axe Collector. So yeah, I guess getting enough bones of this guy is just using this Rage Die as possible. So you could get to your innate pretty quick. Um, what do we got here? On 1.6 is three bones. 
1.4 is 2, 1.2 is 1. Mm, okay, so we're at 1.4, we can spend it for two bones. If we get to 1.6, we can do three bones. If we get one more bone, we can get our innate targeted right off the bat and, and deal with that, which is kind of cool. Or we can spend four to get Axe Collector all the way up. Okay, so did I lose my health? I am at five, yes, I did. Okay. So next is number three, Poison 2 Bog Frog. So that's all he's gonna do is put a Poison 2 on me. All he's gonna do. That's horrible. So at the start of my turn, I'll lose two health. It'll down tick to one, and I'll lose one health on the next turn if it's still there. So that's not good. Okay, that's the end of the round. Round two. Okay, let's go with... Um, let's see, what can we do here? Still three attack dice, one defense, I think is what's going to happen here on the Bog Frog. Oh, I forgot the Mischief. Did he roll Bones? No, he didn't roll Bones, so I don't need to do that. Yes. Got to pay attention to that. Alright, so we got a Bones here on myself. That's fine, I guess. Uh, then three attack is enough to kill the Bog Frog. Oh, I forgot my Poison too, at the start of my turn. So that down ticks to one. I was just talking about that and I just didn't do it. Okay, sorry. So Bog Frog is in the defeated pile. And I'm down to three health. Um, I also attacked, so I'll uptick to 1.6. Oh, and losing the two health actually would have upticked me to this magical 2.0, right? Two health loss plus an attacks, three more. I was at 1.4. So one, two, and where's this 2.0? Right here. So I magically add the 2.0. So on my turn, let's calm down. I'll spend two and down ticket to 1.8. And I don't have an adjacent baddie to kill. And I don't have a dice to advance to. So I'll just leave it on the 1.8. Spend the two bones. This will slide down. And that is me. Now this guy's gonna go. He is probably gonna roll bones and knock it away, but he's just gonna roll one attack because he already has his defense locked in there. And he did roll an attack, so that... Oh, body count went up, forgot about that. Interesting, should I have used that to heal? Uh, well, I lose one from this guy. because I can't seem to roll a defense hit, only bones. So that is him, and we're good. Round three. Uh, I'll go lose a health down to one. Get rid of this poison. It's not looking good so far. Uh, then, hmm. let's just go uh, spend two decks. One, two. And then I will exhaust this die. Yep. Yeah, to just. Do an execute on this guy, and it'll auto kill him. And the battle is won. And I go back home, um, I tell between my legs with one health left, and take my die out there, reset to round one here. All right, so reward phase, and this bones is gone. All right, so. Um, we are getting two training points, a loot. So I got gadget arm. If training attempt fails, you may make another attempt. Interesting, I can use it twice, two uses. And then we are gonna progress up one to two here. And the two training points. So our thing recommends, we're already at six health. Dex is at least four. Got there. And then it says, after that, focus on training attack. If he's playing solo, prioritize one or two dense defense dice before more decks. So we already got one defense. So I say we go with one attack. Uh, so let's try to roll three attack dice, see if we can even get there. And we got a bone, so we fail. Let's try it on defense. Uh, one defense dice. We got it. So let's go up to two defense. And then our second training point. So like a kobold, it's recommending, which gives us hardy. It's possible to have some hardy, which is nice. So 
So I say we go that route since we were close to dying there. I think we should help us out. Now Hardy, what that's going to do is anytime we take damage on a turn, uh, well you roll this die, you could uptick your, your uh, Axe Collector, but if you roll a 1 on this Hardy symbol here or a 2, that'll let you for 1 or 2 rounds you have Hardy. So anytime, is it turns or rounds? Uh, so you put it in your Axe Slides to counter. You now have Hardy for the number of rounds. Okay, reduce number by one at the start of your turn. Well, Hardy is active. Any turn your HP takes damage, including true damage, it's reduced to one. Reduce number by one at the start of your turn. Okay, cool. So we'll take that. We have like a Kobold, so that's your second training point, and that is done. On to recovery phase. Well, I'm definitely going to heal up to my full six health, so I can't scout. Um... Do I want to try for some better loot? I... Oh! <laughs> I took this and then a training attempt failed and I did not use it. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Maybe I'll keep it, actually. <laughs> oh, I'm so dumb. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I'll, I'll keep it and maybe use it at least once before I try to toss it away, which is totally valid. Uh, okay, so let's move on to day three. All right, so uh, this is the one where I can tuck my ears in, roll a die on a one to two. I'm spotted, uh, but I do get a progress and a training out of it, or I just take a troll of loot, and then I have to shuffle the um, Molnor Trader Special Encounter in where I could face them later for some dangerous darts or fight them or whatever. Um, troll of loot's interesting, but I think I'm going to go with the first option, and if I do, uh, the Tyrant Encounter will actually jump to be my next encounter. So that could be very bad getting it this early, but I'll take the risk. So, let's do it, roll on a d6. So one to two bad things happen, any other die result, we're good. It's a five, all right. So that is just gonna get me two progress. One, two, so I only need two more to, to be able to fight him, but I still have 10 days to do it in, so I can take my time here. Um, so next I will, uh, a training point. So let's do that attack attempt again. So I'll roll three attack dice, which is my current attack stat. And we're good. So I don't even need to use this item here. And there we go, four attack dice, done. Okay. Uh, now recovery phase. Let's do some scum. Let's try for some better loot actually. So I'll discard this. And then I'll roll, should, uh, yeah, four attack dice. And, oh, six, six, sorry. I do, oh, let's do six. And for any bones I get, I can look at that many um, loot. So only one bone, so I'll just look at the top loot and I take it. So it's a stone hammer, single use. And it says add four to an action die result during your lock pick attempt. So it can help me get into some troll loot, I guess. Meh. We'll see, we'll see if I get some. Or if I take some, but whatever. Okay, so that is that. On to day four. Uh, so let's find out our first encounter in here. So it is what goes around. How unusual. Up ahead, I can make out a group of raiders robbing a lone Molnor trader. Molnor always has amazing goods. Always have amazing goods, usually belonging to others. The original owners of those goods are typically ones who need rescuing. Seems the boot is on the other foot for a change. Helping a black market trader seems wrong, but I also despise raiders, and I could let the dust settle before picking off any stragglers, maximizing my spoils. And yet, it would be nice to have a Molnar owing me for a change. All right, so our first choice, combat. Get two loot, and let them deal with the Molnar attack. Or let them deal with the Molnar then attack, so we build a batty queue with batty points, add a five point batty at the top of the battle queue. All baddies start with two fewer HP. Okay, or defend him. We get some troll loot out of it. We build a batty queue, and then we add a five point batty to the top also. And then you pay, place four HP on a gear lock melee position on a battle mat. That's your trader. Trader is friendly under your control. He's a melee unit with two move and two attack, uh, and it takes his turn right after you. To succeed encounter, trader must survive. If successful, remove the special encounter Molnor traders from this adventure. Uh, but it's not in there. I didn't choose that, so I could just get a troll loot out of this and still a loot, but I think three loot would be awesome. So I'm gonna try that first option. And battle queue is baddie points, so we're at day four, times one is four of them, so we'll do four one-pointers. 
Then we add a five point baddie to the top. This could be very bad. And then all baddies start with two fewer HP though. So that is nice. Okay. So before the battle, this 1.0 little rage ticker die goes up there. And I think that is all we need to do to set that up. So let's start the battle set up here. Oh, we got a Manticore, Poison 2, Rage 2, 6 health, 3 uh, initiative, he's ranged, that's bad. He's just going to be raining down poison on us. Uh, but he starts with 2 less HP, so he starts with 4. And he's going in lane 1, ranged, and 3 on the initiative. Next up is a Griffin Yearling, uh, coming in at 2, melee, starts with 2 less health. He's actually dead, so he is gone. And we'll just say that's done. Okay. <laughs> and then a clay golem coming in at three HP, two less because of the encounter card. He'll come in at lane two, melee. And he goes slow, so he is a two on the initiative. Next, bog pole range, raining down poison one on us, three health, but he'll only start with one, which is nice. Going lane three, back in the corner here with ranged. Going at three, but he goes after the first three because he's already on the board there. And then next is another bog frog, poison two, but he comes in at only two health. If I can get my axe collector going, man, I can smack some of these fools from anywhere. Uh, then he'll come in at three, but he'll go after all the other threes. And he is going in a slot for melee. Okay. <laughs> Let's roll this up. Four. Okay, so I go before them all. That's nice. And let's start. Ooh. So first I would get poison two with the enemy. So after I go, poison two if he's around. Then right after that, I get poison turned into poison one. So the last poison effect you take, that's what the die is on it. So poison two, then poison one. And then poison two again. So I take this guy out, I will get poison two, but then only turn to poison one before my next turn, which is nice. But then I have so far to go to get to these guys. But I think leaving that like that is kind of funny. So I'm gonna start down here and just try to take out this poison two guy. The bog frog. Okay. So let's go first here. Um, oh, did I forget? I forgot to put this to body count two because I did have two enemies last time. Uh, okay, so I can heal up to two if I want to spend that. So I'll go first here. Uh, so we got some different values. So I got four decks. So let's just roll three attack, one defense. Even though defense, oh, I guess it will matter for this guy, smacking me, uh, melee break on the clay golem. But of course, my defense rolls bones, which seems to be a thing. But I got three attack, which is one more than enough to kill the bog frog. So one enemy off the board. And he'll go there. I will tick up body count to three, which, oh, looks like it has a max of five. Okay, and I attack, so the Rage die goes up to 1.2. Okay, Manticore is going to go from there. Range doesn't need to move, and shoots a Poison 2 on me. And he's got Rage 2, so if his health goes below... Actually, his health is below his full right now, so he is Rage 2 and rolling to attack die already. Forgot about that, so I maybe should have prioritized this guy. And he hits me for 2. Now I lose 2, and because of that... Uh, this upticks twice because of the two health, so I'm at 1.6. Okay, so that's him. Then the bog pull will go. He'll poison one me, which will just turn this to poison one. Then the clay golem will go. And we'll move him here. And he will attack for one. And he hits me for one. So now I'm at 1.8 on my Rage die. And we're on to round two. So I could just smash this guy, but my dex is four. 
I could just automatically take out a guy with this. I should have done the hardy thing. So start of my turn, I'll lose one to poison, go down to two health. Oh, did I forget body count? No, I didn't. I haven't killed another guy yet. But I will spend the body count, go down to th zero. I'll go up three health. And the poison die is gone. So I'm at five HP. Then I will move. So how much decks? Four decks? One, two, three. So I still have one decks left. I will use the execute on this uh, to kill this guy. Hopefully I did all that right with the ticking and stuff. I'm learning here, I'm learning tantrum. So if you're watching this on YouTube later, leave it in the comments below and let me know if I've misticked and stuff. Um, see how bad I'm doing here. I'm trying to take it slow and steady so I can not miss that stuff. So he is gone. Um, this will go here. Body count will go up one. Uh, this is a five point baddie, so he goes in the five point baddie defeated pile. Oh, I couldn't do that because he's five point baddie. Da -da -da -da. So let's roll back. Uh, so we healed up red zero. This guy was at four. Yes, that is correct. He's a five pointer. So I could. So it's here, right? So one, two, three decks I used, but I could just use it on this guy. So it was at 1.8. I can just take out this clay golem. Yes, yeah, so let's just do that. We'll just take out the clay golem. So I'll use that anytime on my turn. And I'll take out the clay golem, which will then put body count up one. And this guy is gone. So this guy was three after that. The clay golem is out. He'll go there. And then I still have four decks to use on my turn. Uh, let's go. Let's just stay where I am. I'm going to roll four dice. Let's use two defense and my two skilled. Oh, sorry. What am I doing? I don't. <laughs> X collector is not going to use. Uh, so two defense, one attack. And I'm trying to get the hardy lined up here. And also get some bones, maybe, and then I can pop my axe collector up, which would be nice, and get that ready for a future battle or maybe this battle. So there's the bones. Uh, didn't get the hardy I wanted. I did get two defense. Uh, two attack goes to waste. And should I just uptick axe collector? Yes. So let's uptick Axe Collector. That gets exhausted. I will then down tick Axe Collector to do two damage. And I will do that on this guy. I think. No. Let's do it on. This guy. So we'll take out the little. Uh, it's probably bad because then it, it leaves it open, so I'm not getting that nice little poison one right after. But uh, we'll take him out. Body count goes up to two. And that's gone. Okay, so that was my turn. Pretty adventurous turn there. Uh, okay, this guy will go and he's rolling two attack dice. He's giving me poison too because he's below his health, so he's raged. Rage 2. So 2 attack uh, just knocks away my defense, which is nice. So nothing gets through there. Round 3, uh, I lose 2 HP. And don't worry about the rage, it's gone. This ticks down to 1. Then I will... Let's use 3 decks to get beside him. I have one left, so I'll roll, I guess it doesn't matter, I'm actually going to roll a defense die, and I'll heal two with body count. I 
and two defense. Okay, that is good. So beside him, we're all good. Then he will go and switch my poison back to poison two. He'll roll two attack dice and hit me for two, knocking away my defense. Round four, I lose two. This goes to one. Okay, now I'm at four decks. I will roll four attack dice, hoping to take this guy out. And maybe if I roll a couple bones, then I can use Axe Collector and just throw it at him once, but I need to get up some attack on him though. Oh, wow. Okay, so two attack goes through, puts him down to two left. So that's gone. Then the two bones, which kind of worked out actually. I'll spend that to make Axe Collector go all the way up to the max, which is three. And I believe I can use it any time. To counter, deal two damage to non-adjacent baddie. Oh, non-adjacent. Crap. <laughs> oh no, oh well. Oh well, let's see what this guy's gonna roll. Yeah, I need that hardy on that first uh, skill die. So let's see here. He is going to roll two. And he turns my poison back to two. Two bones. Wow. Okay. He doesn't have a backup plane ability. So round five. Okay, I will go first. Lose two. Down to one health. And I got to kill this guy. So we're going four attack dice. It's got two health. I don't know what else I can roll here. I could move away and do Axe Collector. But then I can't roll these attack dice. Yeah, so I gotta do the four attack. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Got five, so that's uh, overkill there. Get him cleaned up. So that was a close one. Uh, now body count goes up to one, and that is the battle. So I go back with one HP again at the end of battle. Crazy. It's close with this guy. All right. So this stays is ticked to three, so I have three um, axes to throw around. I keep this uh, body count going forward too. Okay, very nice. So at the end of this one, I get three loot, one training point and a progress. We're at five out of six progress, which is nice. I will, for training points, training points. Let's do Cripple or Way of the Wild it's recommending. Cripple or Way of the Wild. So Cripple can reduce the one attack die on an enemy and you can put it on top of them in their active slot and it will reduce, yeah, by one attack die for the rest of the battle. And then Way of the Wild is kind of cool. For a five point or less baddie, you can throw a dis, uh, nope, what is it, disable? Disable on them, which uh, this unit's skills are suspended entire battle. So you can take away like Hardy and Compound and Mischief and Poison and all that stuff on an enemy. And some of these enemies only have uh, keywords or skills. They don't have um, attack, which is nice. So that would work good. So I will take that actually. Die number 11, Way of the Wild. Which just has a star, so I can start there. That is from the Skirmisher Profession. Uh, what am I doing here? Two, one, okay. All right, and three loop. See what we get. Fresh bog meat, single use. In a battle, heal yourself five HP, then add poison to effect die on your gear lock. That's kind of nuts. Raider armor, had this yesterday actually. Uh, ones rolled on your defense dice may be upgraded to two defense. Bones rolled on your defense dice may be converted to one, but it's heavy, so it takes three slots. Let's get rid of the stone hammer. And utility parts. Mm. 
utility parts on your turn, unexhaust any one die. That could come in real handy in this, but having HP is pretty big too. And if I can do that HP near the end of battle where that poison might not make too much difference, would be nice. Yeah, unexhausting a die though, fighting mischief guys, unexhausting my rage die after using it or after it gets knocked away is huge too. And I am rolling two defense, so this is not that crazy, but my, like sometimes I just need those defense to hit. And if they're bones, I can turn them to ones. If they're ones, I can turn them to two. So that might keep me alive longer. Yeah, let's prioritize staying alive with these two versus like getting fancy with a die. Even though they, that could help me stay alive too. Oh, that's, that's, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. But let's do it. Get rid of it. So we only have four loot slots. So this one being heavy takes up three. That's why we had to do that. Okay. Uh, that is a reward phase. We've got our progress. We've got our training point. And we got our three loot. Uh, the next is uh, recovery phase, which for sure I'm going to heal back up to six health. So no scouting, no looking for better loot, no lock picking needed. So on to day five. Encounter a trap of my own making, too big and too many. I could never overpower or outrun them. Either this works or my journey ends before the sun sets. The plan? Be my own bait. I <laughs> had this yesterday, I love it. What could possibly go wrong? The trap is set just as the golden sun is beginning to sink, which I pray helps obscure my hasty work of covering the freshly excavated pit. Now I just need to screech like a wounded griffin, stand in plain sight, and hope they don't simply jump over the trap before tearing me limb from limb. So the options are be the bait, be the bait. Uh, battle of the queue is two five-point baddies. As baddies enter the battle mat, you roll a d6. One to two, trap does nothing. Three to six is stunned for the first two rounds. Use a stun effect die. Or maybe I should be the bait, which I chose before. You decide the best. it's best to get in your own trap and fight around your spikes. So this one is... Two five-point baddies. I have surprise, so I jump to the top of the initiative track. And then baddies take one true damage anytime they move to a new position on the battle map, including initial position. Okay. Oh, I see. So they move to a new position, but they may move back to their initial position, which would still be... It's, it's a new position, but it's also their initial position, I guess. So just clearing that up. All right. So no difference here in rewards for either battle. But I like the surprise idea, and I like them getting damage as they move around versus being stunned. But stun's not too bad. But I have a one and two uh, on the die. It does, it does nothing. Five point baddies are kind of rough. Let's do option number two. And we get two five pointers. I have surprise, so basically I start at the top, so it doesn't matter what I get actually I'll do it in order it's actually they move to the bottom I believe um, so before battle I'm at 1.1 my rage die let's go here Ooh, we got a stone golem seven health three attack die two defense goes at three uh, where's die one what did I do here die one goes at three and yeah that's that's a big boy Seven health, wow. And he's melee. And he has corrosive on his backup plan, so if he rolls a bones, he will burn away the rest of my defense dice after I deal with the attack. And he has break, so anytime I hit him, I'll, I'll be exhausting my attack dice, which is pretty bad for tantrum. He's all about the attack. But he's a five pointer, so I need the second rage die to even start doing the one shot kills on these guys, if I can get there. Uh, okay, so next is a dire wolf, six health. Four attack or four initiative. He has lash back two, so when he's hit, he'll hit back for two uh, damage. Tax for four. He's melee. Going in slot two here, and four puts him ahead of the corrosive guy here, the stone golem. Okay, then I roll my die, which is a five anyway, so I'm at the top. And then the surprise happens, which would just move them down to the bottom of the track if they were above me, I guess. Okay. Um, where am I starting? I 
There's no way to move after. But if I start here, wolf goes first, has to move down to me. This guy can't reach me. The wolf's attacking for four. Oh, man. No, let's go crazy. So we'll stay here. We will... Hmm. Or not. Do I take the first round and just kind of run away? Uh, baddies take one true damage anytime they move to a new position on the battle mat, including initial position. I wonder if it's each space they lose one. Well, that's fine. A trap of my own making. Too many bones. A trap of my own making. Uh, damage each space. Let's see what we find here. All right, so there's a board game geek rules thread on it. Uh, so let's see. Can't recall exact wording. It's one HP per move or one HP per space moved. Oh, here's an official answer. They take one true damage for their movement whether they move one or two positions. Okay, that's how I played it yesterday. That makes sense. Okay, so uh, that will make me start. I mean, I can Axe Collector and still hit somebody. And then I don't take Lash back. So I'm going to... One Dex... So I have three decks left. I will roll the Kobold die. I will roll this uh, die that I had that I took out for some reason. Um, the, what is this one? Way of the Wild, trying to get that Disable thing going. And, but Disable immediately place to save oh, any adjacent baddie. Maybe I'll hold off on that until I have an adjacent baddie. Okay, so I have one dex, two more. Uh, let's just roll our two defense and get ready for the beatdown. So I'm not attacking, so I won't uptick my rage die here. And gotta remember my raider armor. So I get hardy for one round. Sure, I'll take it. Two bones. Uh, but I can actually turn these to one defense, which I will do. Okay, because of my raider armor. Now, number four here, this pup, or the dire wolf goes, he'll move two. Now let's put him here. No, nope, let's put him here. Uh, so he loses one for the movement uh, with the encounter. And then he will attack me for four. Okay, so uh, he got a bones, which doesn't do anything. He got five attack, two twos and a one. Um, but I'm hardy and I have armor. Armor go first. I think he takes these both away. Hardy or defense dice? Hardy or defense dice? Okay, no defense dice are always first, I'm sh pretty sure, so it'll knock away both of those. Hardy. Uh, unit with Hardy can take only one HP of damage per turn, not round. Well, except that. Uh, yep, that makes sense. Each gear lock can attack and reduce HP by one on their turn. True damage is also reduced to one. If a gear lock has Hardy, each baddie can do one damage on his turn. 
Uh, this is different from thick skin, which reduces damage by one, not two one. Hmm. I don't know. I think it just reduces the damage to one, and then I can block one. That's how I'm gonna do it, I guess. Let me know in the comments below or in the chat if you guys know any different. Uh, okay, so that's that. Uh, next is this guy who's going to try to move and get to me, and he'll lose one because of the encounter rules. And that is the end of round one, going to round two. Let's, so at the start of my turn, this hardy business is gone. That is exhausted. Oh, I forgot to use Axe Collector on my last turn. Whoops. That's okay. Or not. No, we'll say I used it. I totally should have. Because it was in the corner. That makes sense. And I, was, I would use it on this. Actually, no. I would use it on the Lashback guy so I don't get hit. With Lashback. I mean, the chances are less. I wouldn't get hit with Lashback on that attack. But uh, it would be a better chance to kill him now. He's only at three. So I could kill him before I get Lashback on. Okay. So next is, he didn't lose any health. I haven't made an attack yet. So here we go. Let's go. Hmm. I guess I'll roll three attack on this guy. Maybe four, three attack, one defense. Yeah, let's do three attack, one defense on the wolf. Okay, so three attack, that is enough to kill him. So he's done, body count up to two. Wolf is gone, five pointer. Um, I did attack, so this ticks up to 1.2. This comes off. Uh, anything else I need to remember? I guess we'll tick this down one more. And on this turn, I'll throw an axe to do two damage to a non-adjacent baddie hitting the stone golem. And I think that, oh, two defense also, which is nice. Perfect. So this guy will go. He'll move, he'll lose one for the encounter effect, and then he is down to three damage. Um, and he's just gonna attack me, three dice, two defense. Hmm. Okay, so he got three defense, wow. It's gonna be a problem. Uh, then he rolled three attack which gets rid of all of the defense dice that I built up there. Okay, so I haven't lost any health yet. Uh, all right, round three. Uh, I will move one, two, three. Yeah, we'll go three. Three decks, and then I will roll. Hmm. Take away his break. Yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll just roll a defense, which is one. Okay, now his turn. He will move two to try to get to me. He'll lose one true damage. Um, for moving, down to two health. And round four. Uh, I will go. Hmm. He's got that three arm, uh, three shield on him, makes it tough. I, I wanna just roll and try to attack him, and, and, and it, but I might not get through. Still, he only has two health left, so I could play the moving game. 
Yeah, I'll just roll one defense. Oh, that, yeah, sorry, Raider Armor. This would be two defense up here. Oh, man, so much to keep track of here. I'm trying to figure it out. Okay, um... Yeah, let's just go... Can't move anywhere where he can't come and hit me next. But... Yeah, I'll just stay here. Roll a defense die. Yeah, there's no... Uh, which is a bone. Uh, but I can make it one with my radar armor. Okay, he'll go, he'll move, take a true damage. And now he'll just roll three attack dice. His two defense are already locked up. And he got three, which gets fully blocked. Okay. Round five. Uh, I'll go. And... Yeah, I'll just move away three decks, and roll a defense die. So I'll turn that to a two with Raider Armor. And then he will go and move, and the true damage finishes him off, which is not me killing him, so I don't get the body count tick. Uh, and he is gone. Let's reset... Okay, so that'll go there. Tantrum, still has six health. Nice, that was a better one. Okay, uh, then this will go back here. I think I have reset. So now reward phase, two training points and a loot. Let's see what loot we get. Mech pick. No, I'm good. I'll just toss it back. My, lot, my loot slot's already full. I like what I have. Uh, so let's go with two training points. Let's see what's on the menu today. Uh, it's saying, look at Way of the Wild. I have already Cripple. I didn't take Cripple. Could start with the next Rage Die, maybe. I'm actually going to go up a health. And... Let's just go up a dex. Yeah, let's just do that for now. Play it a little safe, and we'll worry about skill die next. Uh, okay, and a progress point gets me to what I need. I think I have all six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Not bad, we're going good there. But I think I'm gonna stick with another encounter and maybe build up tantrum a little more. So, yeah, I have till day 10, so let's let's keep it going. Uh, recovery phase, don't need to heal up any health. I can scout, so let's do that. This is a five, so I can look at a five point baddie, which I will do. And we got this guy with poison two, but I'm okay actually with my way of the wild. I'm gonna keep this guy around. And uh, yeah, that might be okay. I can play with that, because it, it helps my rage die too when I take some poison to hurt me. Yeah, we'll keep it on top. Bog lurk. Okay, uh, on to day six. All right, next one. Hopefully I don't get a tyrant encounter would be bad. Risky payoff. The ebon, evil as they are, still show a strange cross species loyalty. Trolls won't hesitate to call for help from an orc, a kobold, or even a bog scum. A fight may look winnable, but it's often not worth the risk. Luckily for me, creatures of the Ebon are um, almost always have a price. I wonder if the menacing fear figure ambling toward me can simply be bribed with something shiny in exchange for safe passage. Unfortunately, if he has friends hiding in those bushes, they might be waiting to take a whole lot more than a shiny object. All right, stand your ground and fight. So baddie points at the end of rounds three and five, roll a d6. And then we on one to three, we add a, a baddie point, or baddie, one point baddie to the bottom. Four to six, no baddies join. You can get a training point and some loot there. Uh, or 
Make a peace offering is worth a shot. If you have, so this is a non-combat option. I probably will take this one because I don't really need loot that I can think of. I mean, I'm sure there's better loot, but. Uh, if you have loot to offer, choose and place it on the battle mat. Oh, I see. If I roll a d6, or I roll a d6, a one to three, the loot is taken, but Batty's not satisfied. I have to make the choice again. On a four to six, loot is taken, and Batty leaves. No battle today. <laughs> so dirty. Uh, okay. Batty points would be six and one, so it'd be a five and a one point. Yeah, let's just do the first option. <laughs> let's do the first option. Okay, so battle queue is batty points. Uh, so what do we say? Five and one. We know the bog lurk is the top one there. Uh, then at the end of rounds three to five, hopefully we don't get that far, we roll a d6. One to three, we add a one point batty to the ba bottom of the queue. So on one is the bog lurk. He is coming in at six, big HP. And he is ranged, hiding in the back, shooting poison around. Attacking the three weakest. That was sucking in co-op game. Uh, then we have another range, which is going to be the Goblin Bomber. Three da three health, uh, five initiative, one attack. Mischief one, so he could knock away my die and out of my active slot. Careless for the backup plan, which is good if he misses. Uh, but yeah, three health. Coming in at spot number two, lane two. Going in the range slot. And the first guy was, we said, a four on the initiative track. This guy is a three, so he's going after him. I will roll and go five before them. Nice. Okay, uh, so that's that. Anything else? I got my 1.0 die set up. All right, let's get to it. Uh, so we don't have to worry till end of rounds three to five. So that's that special rule. Otherwise, it's just a standard battle. So let's do this. Okay, so we are going to start... I don't want to take out Poison 2 guy. Try to take... I don't know what's... Who would I want to take the skills away from? Probably the Poison guy if I can. So I'm going to start here. I'll go first. Move up once. So that's one dex. I have four left. I will roll this to try to disable him to get rid of that Poison 2. I will roll the Hardy to try to uh, get Hardy going. Worst case is Axe Collector. I will then, what else to roll? It's like four I can pick. Yeah, let's just do, two attack, I think. Yeah, let's do two attack. Okay. All right, so I did get it. So I will put a disable die on this guy. So he no longer has poison. He has no attack, he has nothing. He's literally just a six health dude sitting on the board. Uh, so that is exhausted. I got a bones. I got one attack on him, taking him down to five HP. I can uptick axe collector, which I will do. That's exhausted. And that's that. Uh, so. I attacked, so this goes up by one tick. And I will... I'll save Axe Collector, actually. I'll save it. I'll try to see if I can get it up to... Th what does it go up to? Three? And then have it for a future battle where it's more dangerous. I, I don't want to throw it at this guy. It's just hitting me for one. I mean, I'm not so worried if it gets rid of my Rage die, so we'll see. But anyways, uh, the Bog Lurk is going next. He does nothing. No poisons. So it stays on to the end of the battle. He's disabled. Uh, then next is this guy who's just going to one attack die. Mischief one. So this die is gone. And he hits me for one. Which will not uptick the rage die because it's gone. <laughs> All right. And that is that. So round two. I will go first. Uh, let's move one. So we lose the dex for the movement. Then we'll do four dice. Let's do uh, three attack, one defense on this Goblin Bomber. Oh, so two bones, but I could actually, I will. Put 
put the bones in there. I'm not going to uptick it with, uh, with the um, the raider armor and a two attacks. So this guy lives. This sucks. And I'm adjacent to him, so I can't use the bone, uh, the axe collector on him. <laughs> now this guy go does nothing. Then he goes, rolls one die. Maybe he'll careless himself. Nope. He hits me for one. Mischief. Nothing to knock away. That's another reason why I didn't want to put the defense up there is because the mischief, you know, just, just hits it away. Uh, so I take away one. Round three. I will go. Uh, let's do two defense. Let's try to get my innate going would be nice. So two defense, trying to get some bones. Or maybe just the defense. I will attack him for... Uh, let's roll three on the attack. Looks like I can roll five dice. All right, so defense. I'll make these twos with the raider armor. Wonder if I can find the twos. Boink, boink. And definitely four is enough to kill this one HP left baddie. And that is here. He is gone. Uh, body count goes up to three. Okay. Uh, then the bog guy will go, does nothing, and then round four, I will move up. Uh, let's, let's try to go for bones, actually. I'll take these out. Uh, let's roll my two defense. Three attack. And maybe I can get axe collector up to three, or try to get my innate, maybe. No bones at all. So I got four off of him. Which takes me down to one health left. Okay, that's gone. Then two defense. Let's throw two and a two up here. That's that. He'll go, does nothing. Round five. Uh, I am going to try to roll the two defense. And let's do... I guess three attack. I mean, I could let it go to the, the other rounds, but then uh, the fatigue will kill him and it doesn't count for me getting a body count. So I want to get the body count. So let's kill him. Oh, so let's do the two bones. So recoup is me getting four health. I think that's it. And what am I at? Five out of six. It would prevent me from Having to heal up at the end of round, but that's a waste. I like the axe collector just going up to one, or going up maxed out. So I will do that. I'll back a plan down to one. Axe collector is maxed out. I'll apply these four hit, uh, four damage worth of dice there, and kill him. And that'll go away. That'll go away. And he is gone. I win. Back to round one. Reset this stuff up. Uh, I can't find it. All right, this is gone. This is back here. This is back here. Okay. Uh, then this guy is dead. So did I get the body count on that? Ooh. Cannot remember. Did I do the body counts? I feel like I didn't. Close to four. Okay. Um, all right. Let's go with recovery. Oh, reward phase. Sorry. Uh, so two training points. Let's get rage die number two going. Okay. And then let's get we have here I like my stats I think we're good there um, so cripple I think is a good choice to reduce an attack die off an enemy let's do that Right. All right. Let's take a sip of coffee here. 
taking a second. Okay. Okay, that is done. Oh, progress, doesn't matter. Got our loot recovery phase. Uh, yeah, I'll just heal up to seven. And that is that. Don't want to toss any loot or anything. Oh, I can't, I already, I already recovered. Uh, okay, so day seven, next encounter. Or do I just fight Drellin now? Let's do one more encounter. We're just trying to practice with Tantrum here and figure out how he works, right? So, okay, so I got uh, between a rock and a hard place. Hmm, scaling down this rock cliff feels oddly different from the last shale I traversed. It ex exudes a strange warmth. Uh, must just be the altitude. After all, I've been descending all morning. Thankfully, solid footing is not far away. I briefly pause on this ledge to survey the valley and relocate the raiders I've been tracking. A quick glance back at the rock behind me reveals the rock looking back at me. <laughs> Giant pieces of earth break free from the cliff surface and suddenly hollow burning eyes are staring into my soul. Ooh. Uh, towering above me is an angry monstrosity, a golden golem. All right, so I could battle is choice number one, a five point baddie and then the stone golem. Oh no, it is. Five point baddie stone golem is the battle cube. Okay, so I fight just I have to find this stone golem guy. Or uh lead it leave it to the lead it to the raiders, where I could get a training point and some trove loot. You take off down the shale like a dire wolf with its tail on fire. A quick glance back tells you the golem is in pursuit. Now to get close enough to those raiders and then hide. So this would be baddie points battle cube, which is seven times one, so seven. And then I search for the 20 point baddie golden golem. During the battle setup, instead of your gear lock, use the golem to fight the baddies. While controlling the golem, use of his use of its skills, attack and defense dice is optional. Oh, okay, cool. Um, and then he has, oh, it says, uh, where is this guy? It's a 20 pointer, golden golem? No, really. oh, this one's golden golem. The other one is Stone Golem, which is me just fighting the five point version. No, I think it's funnier to do the second option. And he has, yeah, see, he has this symbol that brings a, I think it brings a one point baddie when he comes in. Uh, when this baddie enters the battle mat, add this many five point baddies to the top of the battle queue. Okay, so he has a five point baddie also. Interesting. And he's, it's old, Batty is always added to the bottom of the battle queue. Sure. At the end of round three, your gear lock joins the battle. All remaining battles, baddies, including the golem, now target you. Let's do it. Let's get funny. All right. So let's, <laughs> let's put this right here so we can try to keep track of what is going on. Okay. So baddy Q is baddy points. So seven, I said, right? So five, two ones. They go underneath the five. Then we searched for this guy. We got him. And then uh, we set up this guy to fight. So we don't need to put him in a lane. We just get to set him up. So let's do the baddies. So lane one is a owl bear intensify one and terrify or inspire one so he'll make the next baddie in the queue go right away move up the, on the initiative track right after him and then get one extra attack die and then terrify when i attack him i get a terrify die and then until my next turn i can't attack creatures with terrify so i'm kind of scared uh okay let's do six health Uh, he is a melee, lane one, going a four. The next one, lane two, is a little direwolf pup. Aw, so cute. Uh, lash back one on this guy, melee, three health. Uh, go in there, goes at three. Okay, not too bad on that guy. Then we got another one of these goblin bombers going range with three health. 
And range in three. They have Mischief one, Careless on the backup plan. Rolling one attack die and going at five. So the earliest so far out of these three. Why do I have different color dice? I can't do this properly. Uh, okay, let's go. Where is it? Five right here. Okay. We can get there. All right, so now this guy is me. So during stab, instead of our gear lock, I use this guy to fight the baddies while controlling the golem. Use the skills attack, so I can choose not to use break or recover. Recover is a backup plan ability. So this guy has break and recover, so I can optionally not use those, which I think are traps. Because you don't want to be using break if he's being fought by these guys. Since I have to fight him in the end of round three, or starting in round four, I join the battle and he's coming after me. He's nine health, attacking for five dice and three defense. I think while he's fighting, I need to do not do break. I don't want to exhaust the bad guy's attack dice. I want to let them for three rounds just beat this guy as much as they can. And then I don't want to do recover too if I roll any bones. So I don't want him healing back up because I want this guy to be as damaged as possible before I fight him, right? That would make sense. Oh, and a baddie is always added to the bottom of the battle queue when this guy enters. Okay, so I'm adding a five point baddie to the battle queue when this guy enters because of the symbol. So it's not added right onto the board, it's added to the battle queue um, in the bottom at that. Okay, so let's go. He's just going to come in with nine health. Woo! Wish they had those premium chips in stock at uh, Chip Theory. I'm telling you, I would have bought them already. Uh, but they're, they're not coming out for a little bit, supposedly. Uh, so I think it's nine. We're nine. Look at them slipping all over here. I can't even hold them. <laughs> okay. Uh, where do I start this guy? So he'll go here. I assume he doesn't get one of these. But then when does he go in initiative order? Uh, during setup, instead of your gear lock, use the golem to fight baddies. Uh, but then I think I have to use this, right? Because if I don't, when I come in the fight, this guy will never go on the initiative meter and he has to be there, right? And he doesn't have a die. So I can't like give him my die for now, and then when I come in the battle, what happens then, right? It's kind of silly. So this guy is me. Should I just roll his die? Like, ah, why is this not clarified on here? Or do I just set him up? Yeah, I think I should have done it this way. So I'm going to actually undo this. So this guy was second. Let's do it like this. So this guy would have been set up first. Yeah, so I would search for the 20 point baddie. I think I would just set him up. He would go on the top of the battle queue. Because he would be the highest, right? So he would come into lane one. Let's get the one. I think I just set it up like a normal battle queue and then I, I use him in addition. So he would have been on the top of the battle queue. Then this five pointer owl bear would have come in at number two. Then the dire wolf pup would have came in here. I'll fix those. And then this guy would go four in the back. And then when this guy came in, he would have added this five to the bottom of the battle queue anyway, which wouldn't make it on the board yet. I think we've got there, I think so. But like I said, if you're watching this on YouTube later, please leave it in the comments below, or if anyone in chat knows, uh, if I'm messing this up, let me know. Uh, okay, but that makes sense. So I set that up, added that. Uh, so let's go. This guy comes in five. This makes more sense. Then next was this guy at four. Then this guy at three. Then this guy at five, but it goes after the first five. Okay, we got there. Let's do it. Okay. And then when I get added later, 
Uh, when I come into the battle, I'll automatically go to the top of the baddie or the top of the initiative meter because 20 point baddies, tyrants, and gear locks, whenever they're added later, they always come in at the top. But five point baddies and one point baddies, they always get added at the bottom. All right, I think we're good. <laughs> so just remember at the end of round three is when I join the battle. Other than that, I'm fighting with this guy. This guy's me for now. Let's go. So I'm gonna start with myself. And, okay, five attack die. Whoops, three defense. So remember it's skills, attack, and defense dice, use of them are optional. So I can roll them, but I don't have to apply them. Now I just gotta figure out my target. This is a lot of freaking dice, man. This guy's crazy. Eight dice already. 20 point baddies, man. Woo. Okay. So let's see here. So I'm worried, I want to weaken these guys, but maybe not necessarily take them all out yet until later. I don't want to take one out right away because I want them all hitting me. And I assume if I roll five attack dice, I probably didn't kill the wolf who won't get lashed back. He'll be wiped off the board. So I'd rather have him hitting me for now. So I'm going to attack this guy, hoping I don't take him out. Let's do that. So he has four attack dice. I should probably not risk that, actually. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I'll just roll and I'll make sure I don't kill him. Okay, so what do we got here? We got three attack, which is okay. I'll take three away. I get terrified. Uh, if I can find that die. Look at his face. Ah! So he is scared now, terrified guys. So I can't attack them next turn until that's gone. At the end of my turn, I believe. Terrify. After this unit's attack, place a terrified die on the attacking unit until the end of its next turn. Yes. All right. So that is gone. Okay. Next, oh, sorry, I gotta finish my dice here. So, backup plan, I'm not gonna recover two. Obviously, I have nothing to recover anyway. And I'm not gonna apply defense dice. <laughs> okay, so next is the Goblin Bomber, who's just rolling one die, mischief. Is this my active, no, that's, yeah, whatever. No, that would be on top of the chip. So, rolls of bones, hits himself for careless. Oh, that, yeah, that's not good. Okay, sure. So, next is Purple Guy, who is going to do four attack dice on the Golem, and then inspire the next wolf, which gives him an extra attack die, which is awesome. Another reason why I don't want to kill the wolf, or it's not a good idea to do that. Okay, so let's deal, uh, what do we got here? Four to the big stone man. Golden Golem, so four damage, taking him down to five. Uh, Inspire, uh, Bones doesn't do anything with this guy. All right, so Inspire makes the pop, pop go right away with one extra attack die, and he's already the next in line, so I don't need to move him on the initiative meter there. And he rolls two. Excellent, so taking the Stone Golem down to three. And that is the end of the round. There is no chips to bring in this five point baddie. So yeah, we'll go to round two. Stone Golem, or rock, Golden Golem, sorry. Uh, he's gonna roll five attack dice and three defense, I guess. So I see why you may not want him to die too quickly. You might wanna use him to kill some guys. So we'll see, maybe I will do a little bit of recovery with him to make him survive another round here. So let's just, I think we need to smash the pup. Okay, so, <laughs> so many dice. Okay, so we're going for the pup. Or, yeah, we'll go for the pup. Okay. All right, so the pup is gone. Because I want to get that other five point baddie in here. So he is gone. And that is gone. 
and yellow is out. Okay, so that is the attack dice applied. Uh, Defense-wise, I will not apply defense, but I will recover two health on the stone golem. Maybe he'll survive. No, I will apply the two defense. Yeah, because I couldn't attack. So this is gone. The terrify goes away at the end of my turn. Uh, so I'm a little beefed up, which may be a bad thing, but I'm hoping the, this guy will smash through it. So the, the goblin bomber is going to go. Just roll one, die. Mischief actually knocks away this. And then hits me for one. Take me down to four. So the golem might see his end here. And then the owl bear is going to roll four. Whoops, uh, what do you get? He got three and a bones. So we, <laughs> that's, that's great, perfect. He's down to one health left. That's, he didn't die, that's all that matters. And that's that, so on to round, uh, actually we'll leave it around two for a sec, we gotta bring in this guy. So we melee goblin sapper, who's mischief two, signal one. So if he's alive on his turn, he's going to signal another one point baddie to the baddie queue. Mischief two, he's going to knock away two dice out of active slots before attacking. Five health, three attack. Uh, so that's not good, really. Um, okay. And this guy is going in the melee on lane three, coming to the bottom of the queue. Uh, on to round three. So end of next round, I will come in and they'll all come after me. So let's be smart here. Uh, okay, so Clay Golem's going first. I feel like he wants to attack this bigger guy that just came in. So five attack, three defense. I maybe should have done the break on this guy when he attacked, but that's okay. That is okay. Whatever. I'll do it this if I can. Uh, he'll be dead though. Yeah, I missed the break opportunity there. Okay, so he's going after this guy, Goblin Sapper. All right. So what do we get? Oh, four. Not enough to take him out, but knocks him down to one health left. Okay. I'll use the bones to recover. Mm, do I recover two? Yes, let's do it. Cover two. And let's throw two defense on here, even though it's not going to matter because of the mischiefs coming at me. Actually, yeah, one should matter. Uh, but yeah, let's see. But I think he'll get taken out either way, but we'll see. Okay, so this mischief guy up here goes. So he'll knock away one before attacking. Rolls one. He gets a bone, so he hits himself for one instead of the, clay, uh, the golden golem. And that is that. So he's one health away. Four, this guy's gonna go and he'll roll four attack dice attacking the golem and I will apply break here uh, so one three more which does take this guy out but I will exhaust three of this guy's dice so how do I remember that I don't know I'll just try to put it there and remember okay um, that is gone. Oh, signal's gonna happen now because this guy didn't die. Ah, so Golem is gone. Okay, and then he inspires the next guy, but he's just going to chill. And now we're end of the round. Oh, signal happens. So we got a new one pointer in the battle queue. That guy's gonna come in. It's going at the bottom of the queue. Three health. Uh, melee, mischief one. It's only hitting for one. Goblin rider. And now myself. Uh, I automatically come in at the top of the queue. And we're on to round four. I will start.
This guy has only one attack die now. This guy's one attack die. This guy's one attack die. This guy still has three. But I can throw at this guy and take him out. I can throw at this guy and take him out only once per turn, though. So I'll throw and take him out. So I should... I'm going to take this guy off. Yeah, let's take... Or no. We're actually going to try to take this guy out so his mischief doesn't take away this die. And then this guy can't reach me to do mischief yet. I'll kill that guy, and then I'll kill this guy on the next turn. So hopefully no mischief hits me. That's my plan. Okay, so my go. And then I am going to move up one. So I have decks left of four. I will, let's see. I will, so I'll do what I said. I'll down tick the Axe Collector, kill this guy, which brings my body count up to five, which is its max. That guy is gone, five pointer, nice. Okay, um, let's do this one, this one, this one. So skills. And I'll just roll one attack die, trying to attack this guy. Or maybe not. Maybe I should do a little more attack. Yeah. So one more attack on the Goblin Bomber. All right. So I can... Ooh. Oh, this guy has a plus one die thing on it too? Did I take the wrong die? 14? <laughs> Maybe I did. 14. Oh, strengthen. Was I even allowed to take that? No, I wasn't. This should be the cripple die. I took the wrong one. Uh, so we'll just say that was the minus one then. Yeah, that's better. They look the same, just one has a minus, one has a plus. This is the same amount of sides though. Yeah, same amount of sides. So I'll just say it hit the side on the minus. Uh, which I'll put on this guy, minus one attack die. So he, right, doesn't have to be my target, does it? Alter you, your or an adjacent baddies. Oh, yeah, he's adjacent. Doesn't say it has to be my target, so perfect. Okay, so this guy now rolls no attack dice, which is great. Uh, then I will, what else did I get? Uh, so I'll tick up Axe Collector by one. I'll just get rid of that. That's fine. I don't care about Hardy right now. And then the attack dice, two, which will kill this guy. And my body count's already up there. So this guy is gone. And he will go in the one. Perfect. Next is this four guy. Doesn't do anything because he's ex dice were broken and he's minus one, so he's got no attack. Next, uh, this guy's gonna try to move around. Can't get to me. That ends his turn. Round five, I go, I will, uh, move one, and I'll roll, let's roll three attack, and this, uh, way of the wild. All right, so I got bones on that. I'm not gonna do that bones. And then I got four attack enough to kill him. And that is that. Oh, I've been forgetting the, the upticking of the attacks. So I should be at two there. I haven't lost any health. So I'm at 1.4. And that guy is gone. And body count is maxed. Uh, next this guy will go, he'll just move down but doesn't get to attack or anything. Now we're at fatigue rounds, so we both lose a true damage, or take a true damage, and then I will go and I will just roll four attack. Yeah, let's just do four attack, one defense, sure. Uh, okay, so I got three bones which doesn't really help me here. And then the three attack is enough to kill this guy. There's only two HP left. And he is gone. This goes here. 
And this is good. I am done the battle. Uh, he goes here. This goes back. I go back with six HP out of seven, not bad. And that would have upticked this, but I mean, that doesn't matter. That's just gonna reset to one for the next battle, which I think will take on the boss man. Uh, so what do we get here? We got two training points. Mm hmm. Okay, for those training points, we're gonna take the we're gonna take a health, go up to eight. So I'll get one of those right now. Okay. Then I'm gonna take the poison armor one like a worm. Uh, so if I roll that, um, and I get it, I put up in the active slot, and I believe, let's see, poison armor. Goes in your active slot. When hit by an adjacent baddie, you may place that number of poison effect die on that baddie. So if I roll a two and I place it up there, I could then do a poison two maybe on the boss would be nice. But we will see. Okay, troll of loot, which doesn't really matter at this point. Uh, I can't take it. My slots are full. I'll just toss it. And then... Oh, a regular loot also. <laughs> and a progress, it doesn't matter. Outside of battle, permanently increase your health die, stat die by one at the start of your next battle, reduce your current HP by three. Yeah, I'm actually gonna toss this, and I'll do this right now. So I'll increase this to nine, which gives me an HP, but then at the start, uh, the start of your next battle, reduce your HP by three. Okay, so I'll just, it doesn't matter, I'll. Yeah, I'll just try to do that in the next battle, which I'll leave right here. So if I did that in a different order, actually I will take the troll loot. Yeah, where was that troll loot? Let's take it. Since I have the space for it, this has been spent. No, I did that in a different order. Yeah, let's just, yeah, we're good. I should have took the loot first, but it's okay. Uh, did the training points. And progress doesn't matter. That is done. So that was kind of cool. Uh, okay, so recovery phase. Hmm, I kept forgetting the radar armor too. Uh, recovery phase. Okay, so these are gonna go back. Okay, that's all good. That's good. Bones are gone. Okay, so no point in healing up, I don't think. I have nine health, but I'm at eight. I may, yeah, I'll just heal since I'm gonna lose three HP at the start of the next battle. I'll just do the heal one. And we'll end that. So day eight, let's go on to Drellin. Battle of the Bog. All right, let's so place Drellin in lane one. Uh, with 8 HP. And, yep, that's 8. Lane 1. Melee. Okay, done. Uh, draw bog type baddies in place in lanes 2 and 3. So, I get two one point baddies. So, that's not one. That's not one. There you go. There's a clay golem going in lane. Two, five health. Uh, so Drillin was five. Clay Golem is going at two. Okay, now I have to shuffle this up. And we will search for the other bog type baddie. Not a bog, not a bog. There is a bog, and a bog frog. Going in number three with four health. And he's also melee. There we go. Okay. Um, these are gone. Okay, now I'll roll my initiative. Four, so it puts me after Drellin. 
And I will start with three less HP. Whoops. And where should I go? I have to get rid of bog guys or else, where is it? So if any bog type baddies are on the battle mat, Drellin cannot lose HP. Poison has no effect on him. And it takes me an extra dex to move a space. Need to remember that. Need to remember that. So we're gonna go after bog frog first here. That is gone. Okay, round one. Drellin is gonna roll his dice, roll three attack, two defense. Ugh. All right, here we go. Uh, he wants to move here and attack me. All right, so he got Poison Enhancer. There's no existing Poison Die, so that doesn't do anything. Uh, he <laughs> gets three defense. Ugh. And then four attack. Wow. So four comes off. That upticks this. One, two, three. Four. Wow. So I'm already at 1.8. That's crazy. So I can execute the bog frog on my turn without even attacking. And I can't attack drill in. All right. So that is that. That's drill in. I think we got all this stuff there. Done. All right. So I'll go. Uh, this is a one point, right? Yeah, one point. So I will just use this to execute. Oh, I didn't even get to my second rage die. There's no five point baddie here, so let's just do this. And this guy's gone. Actually, hold on, hold on, hold on. What we're going to do first is heal five with body count, going back, back, back down to zero. And you'll see why I'm doing it in this order. So that puts me up to seven out of nine health. That is here. Then I will execute this guy, which kills him. And that then raises my body count to one. And then, that's all before I even roll dice here. Uh, so let's go one, two, Three. So I'm going to try to cripple by reducing this guy's attack dice by one if I can. Hardy myself if I can. Uh, and poison armor. Uh, I don't want to do the poison armor yet. Oh yeah, maybe I do because I want this guy to get the poison on him. So maybe I'll get it because he'll attack me next and then maybe I can hit him with some poison armor which would be great. Uh, what does the raider armor do says Saber Expert. Raider armor is it's awesome when you get it with Picket but because uh, he's a defensive guy. But ones rolled on your defense dice may be upgraded to two defense, and bones rolled on your defense die may be converted to one defense, and it's heavy, so it takes up three item slots, or three loot slots. So if I can remember, I remember like half the time, I think, to upgrade them, but sometimes you don't want to do it, right? It says you may, so sometimes you just want to keep your bones and stuff, but... All right, so I have five decks. I can roll trying to get hardy, trying to get poison armor, trying to cripple him, and then... Attack is pointless, so I will just go defense for my last two. Okay, so see here, I could use the radar armor to turn these into defense, which I will do unless I want to try to get to the recoup. Yeah, I'll try to actually get to the heal uh, if I can uh, by getting up to five bones possible. So I do get the two poison armor, so I'll get to put a poison two on the next baddie that hits me. Hardy for the next round. And I do put this on Drellin, so he's only rolling two attack dice for the rest of the battle, because he's been crippled. All right, so that was me. Next is the Clay Golem. He's just going to move two spaces and try to attack me for one. Um, Hardy just brings it down to one, whatever. So I do lose one. That doesn't uptick anything. That's all good because the rage dies are gone. Our die is gone. Uh, so that is that. Uh, he does get poison two back. So that's exhausted. And then he gets poison. So at the start of his next turn, he'll take two damage, which is sweet. And that is that. Round two. Uh, 
Uh, so when does the hardy go away? Hardy for the number of rounds. Um, hardy A counter. You now have hardy for the number of rounds reduced by one at the start of your turn. Okay, so I still have it for this attack from Drellin, who's just going to roll two attack dice. His defense dice are already locked. So uh, he is just going to try to attack me. And it's two, but it'll just get reduced to one, which is sweet from the hardy. Okay. Yep, I think that's good. Uh, that's him. Next is me. So let's roll two defense for sure. Uh, this is now gone. I can try to get rid of break on the guy beside me by disabling him off the way of the wild die. And I should have thrown an axe at him earlier. Okay. Mm. So he's five. He'll take two at the start of his turn. So I'm just going to roll these. And yeah, there's my five decks. So two attack, two defense, and way of the wild. Uh, okay. So I didn't get the, I'll actually take that bones, which is fine. Attack dice, I don't want to exhaust them, so I didn't get rid of the break. That's fine, I won't use those. And these I will uptick with the raider armor to four defense. Okay, uh, next is the clay golem, which will lose two at the start of his turn. Okay. Then this ticks down to one, so at the start of the next turn, he'll lose one. Then he's going to attack me for one die. And that is two, but that just gets taken away, blocked by one of the shields. Round three. Okay, uh, Drellin first, who's just going to roll two attack dice. Yep, two attack dice on me. Uh, he only gets one off, one bones, uh, so that just gets blocked by this. Oh, forgot his die. Probably forgot it last turn too. So Poison Enhancer wouldn't have done anything. And I would now have Poison 2 this turn. Okay, I think that's corrected. Okay. Um, hmm. Now I will go. I'll lose 2 right away. And this will tick down to 1. Down to 3 health. Hmm, it's not looking good. Hmm, let's, uh, so dex, to move it's two dex instead of one. So I could move two spaces. I might just move one actually. Hmm. Let's go. I don't know, five dice. Clay Golem is break still, I don't wanna lose that. So what I'm gonna do is move one into the corner. That takes two decks. I have three left. So I'll roll a defense die. And then I will roll. Actually, we're going to roll both defense die. Uh, before that, actually, I'm going to down tick this to deal two to the clay golem with a axe because he's not adjacent. So he should die at the start of his next turn, which won't help my body count. But actually, I'm going to use the body count. Whoops, it just goes down to zero. And heal one. Oh, I would have lost one at the start of my turn anyway. So I'm down to three. And that's gone. All out of order here. Okay, so I have three health left. That's not good. Uh, gonna roll the two defense dice. If I can get to the recoup, would be awesome. And I can't roll attack because I don't have a target. 
But looks like that's going to be it for my dice. Two bones. Wow. And I got the recoup. So that is just letting me heal tantrum for HP. Let's do it. So I'll spend all five. And four HP. Up to seven health. All right. We're still in this. Oh, he's down here. Okay. Next is the Clay Golem. Just dies at the start of his turn to poison. Now I'm able to fight Drellin and do damage to him because there's no more Bog-type baddies on the board. I don't think I get the body count because of the poison killing him and not me. But I could be wrong on that. But Okay. Round four. Drellin. He's going to move one. He'll roll his stupid die, which I don't have poison on me anymore, which is great. But he could put more poison on me. Uh, but he'll roll two attack dice. All right, so he does <laughs> put poison two back on me. This is crap. Uh, and then two attack. Ugh. So I go down to five health, two poison sitting on me. Okay, next is... Yeah, still hanging on. <laughs> That's true. Uh, okay, so myself going. Two health off. Poison ticks down to one. I have three health left. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> He's got three defense. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't have enough decks to get away out of his range from being hit. Ah... So I can roll four attack die, but I should probably roll defense. So two defense, three attack, I have five decks. It's like I want to move and use these axe collector things on them, but then the decks you just, yeah, it's like. Yeah, let's just do that. Got to remember the armor. Okay, so these are going to uptick twos with the raider armor. That should help keep me around. Uh, two bones, which is good, I think. And two damage. Uh, I will knock this off. I don't know why those are all over there. Those are all exhausted. Okay, then that is me. If he turns out to a poison three, I'm in trouble, though. Uh, okay. So round five. Drellin, one defense, two attack dice, and a stupid die. Oh, poison enhancer. Oh, this goes to three. Oh, that's it. Oh, I think, yep. And he's doing two attack, but that gets blocked. And then he goes up one defense. Then I will go womp womp, and I lose my last three health. So I failed. No. Okay. So let's clean this up. And we can try again on the next day. Still have, I'm only on day eight. So I have till day 10, so I can do it again. Okay, so this guy goes back all wounded and knocked out. Uh, this guy will just chill here for now. Uh, let's go back. Okay, so these will all go away. This will go back in here. This will go back to seven, five, and 11. And there's one other somewhere, this one, 10. Okay, so let's figure this out here. All right, recovery phase. Uh, I think I'm gonna heal back up. <laughs> And at least this one, I'll start with less HP. That was the downside of that item, that loot or whatever, that, that maybe losing that three HP at the start of the battle is what tanked me. But then I've also now wasted my body count, which is not good. So nine health, done. And on to day nine. So we're gonna place Drellin in lane one, eight health. Okay. 
Okay. He goes at five. Uh, then we search for two. One point. Oh, they might be different bog baddies at least this time. Nope. Oh, another clay golem. That sucks. Okay. Uh, he's coming in at lane two, though. Going at two. Uh, five health. Five HP. There we go. And next is uh, another bog frog. So the same thing. Um, four. Coming in over here. Looks very familiar. Uh, do you get more loot or is that only when you defeat an enemy? So you get loot as rewards on um, encounters. So right here, uh, if I beat this encounter, I get a progress point towards the adventurer to get to the bad guy. I get training points, which help me beef up my dice and stats. And then the loot here, this symbol is just I get to draw, everyone in the party gets to draw a loot card, but I'm only playing solo, so I get one loot. Uh, this purple version of it, though, is I get a trove loot, which you have to then try to unlock uh, using a little lock picking dice game where you like roll these trying to like unlock the lock and stuff and there's loot that can help you unlock locks better but the troll loot's usually pretty ball and loot like the most powerful stuff usually sticks around does like a game breaking effect sometimes depending on which gear lock gets it but yeah it's <laughs> loot boxes do you get more loot yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's how loot works so you you have the option on every one so like I could take this option up here and get a training point and a loot, or take this option down here and no battle, but then I don't get loot. So I usually have options to get the loot. This one I got three loot on because I chose this option in one. So I got two loot and then an extra loot just for beating. So whichever option I took there, I would have got at least that one loot. And then I got either a trove loot or two regular loot and stuff like that. So that's how loot works. How many players can this play with? Is it up to four? Yes, it's up to four players. Uh, the base set that I'm playing with here has four gear locks in it that you can pick. They all play 100% different. And Saber Expert, thanks for the follow. Much appreciated. But you get four gear locks that play super different. This guy is like the crazy attack guy. The guy I've only played with before this a bunch of times is Pickett. He is a pure defense build. So he has all this, this backup plan stuff where he can use his shields, his defense dice that are locked up there. He can use them to bash the enemy and make it like an all use them up for an attack. Um, but he has every gear lock has 100% different 16 dice that all do different things. And you can see that here, like for example, this patches, he's the healer and he has a whole different innate ability, uh, all different dice symbols compared to Tantrum that I'm using here. So Tantrum has all different dice symbols and you can even see their dice here. Completely different professions and all different dice with different faces that all do different things. And then a completely different write-up for each guy, how to play them, recommended stuff, different innate abilities, different backup plans when you're spending those missed bones on different things. They all have, they all play 100% different, which I love. And the game is super cool. It's very like, if you've ever played Gloomhaven or any game where like they actually put time into making each character different, that's what this game is. So you might gravitate towards a specific gear lock and then you may play it one time and you'll pick completely different dice based on the tyrant you're trying to, to take down. But the next time you play, you pick a different tyrant, you may pick different dice on the board and using the same gear lock. Or you may play two or three or four player and then you have different gear locks all working together where one's the healer, one's the defense guy, one's the attack guy. And then there's another fourth one in the box that I haven't played with or my wife hasn't played with yet is Boomer. And Boomer is a bombs expert. I don't have it down here. It's upstairs. But uh, Boomer can build bombs and throw grenades around the map. So she's like a ranged character, but she's a little squishy. But I mean, if you play with her with like, you know, the healer or the defensive guy who's taking like tanking up, uh, it plays completely different. And then there were three characters that were released as expansion characters when the first core set came out two years ish ago, I think. Then last year they did another standalone expansion for this game. That's a cheaper entry point. So this is 130 US for the base game because it's all poker heavy poker chips, neoprene mats, and PVC cards and uh, reference sheets. These are not paper. <laughs> they are waterproof, indestructible little cards and stuff. So you never need to sleeve these, which is nice. Um, but then there's an $85 US standalone expansion that has enough to play two players that has a completely different two-sided battle mat. So you can play like on a raft or on land and it has different spots on it. So it works differently. Um, and this has the other side on it for playing that uh, water. Uh, it's called Undertow, Too Many Bones Undertow. So it's a completely different, uh, different game on the other one. Uh, so I'll be going to day nine, gotta remember that. And 
Um, and you also get two different gear locks. So there's two gear locks that come in that undertow standalone expansion. So you could start with that or you can buy undertow and add it to all this. And it gives you more baddies, more tyrants, two more gear locks that play 100% different than any other gear lock. And then there was also a character released with undertow that plays all different. And then they just did a Kickstarter in June that adds another expansion so you can build your own tyrant and which adds like unlimited replayability to the game, adds more baddies, I think, and it adds another, they have two other characters, I believe, that were designed that are coming out like early next year. So like if you, there's a, a gear lock that for everybody, they all play so different. And I have two others, two expansion ones that we'll be doing later on the channel. And I have a campaign expansion uh, that adds more variety to the encounter decks. You can play a campaign which strings tyrants together. So this like two hour, two to three hour playthrough that you do normally, you sit down and play. You could play a campaign that strings them together. So you can play like all through a long day or sp sprawl it over a few weekends. And you can save your progress. You also get boons and scars that carry forward to each uh, each thing. And that's what I'm building up to do is a, a big campaign with my wife, maybe a couple friends. And we do that on the channel where we play uh, through a big long campaign and do a bunch of episodes and throw it over on YouTube uh, at our channel, which you can find down below. Uh, but this is just me practicing, trying to learn the gear locks uh, while my wife's at work and I'm here playing. Uh, yeah, that's why we're doing solo. But we do play two-player normally. Um, but yeah, that's my rant. Uh, damn, this is in-depth. Looks basic, though. I love Gloomhaven. Yeah, this is... this. They call this game, like, too many rules. Even the people were demoing it at Gen Con, which I just got this game at Gen Con 2019. And they were demoing to us. The demo even said they, talk, they call this game around the office too many rules because you have a rule book that is loaded with rules, okay? It's not that bad, not as bad as Gloomhaven, like 30-ish pages. But in this book, there is nothing about any specific gear locks or any of the baddies' uh, skills. They are all on these separate reference sheets. So there's stuff like lock picking is not in the rule book. It's all here in this side of the sheet. And then, um, what else is there? All these skills. So there's different skills in some of the different expansions, but this is just the core set skills, and you have to like, know what all these skills do for the different baddies. And then, like I said, each, each, each gear lock has completely different dice and plays a different way. And all this stuff is not in the rule book. So I would say it adds like another 10-ish pages worth of rules. So it is like a 40 page rule book board game. But you have to memorize a lot and that's why they give you these little, um, these uh, PVC plastic reference sheets because you got to keep these near you so that you can look stuff up. Um, I'm just worried when I go to teach a friend how to play and I gotta teach them the game, but then I've maybe never played the gear lock that I'm trying to teach them. So I'm like handing them this sheet, like here, play play patches. And they're like, how does patches work? You know, and then they have to like read all these and I have to explain each one and try to figure it out. But maybe I've never done it, so I don't know how to play it correctly. But they do give you like a beginner build strat here, how to start and what skills to go for. But that's part of the fun of this game is keep playing every time and pick different skills and do different things. But it's a dice builder RPG, they call it. Uh, so yeah. Let me try to get back into it here. Yeah, because every character has unique skills. Kind of reminds me of Magic the Gathering, how every card can have different skills. Yeah, like lots of keywords, like in any kind of card game, like living or collectible card game, they all have keywords, right? That just keep less rules. And since it's all on poker chips, you can't put abilities on here, right? So you only have so much room. So they have to fit all the stats there and then they just use keywords like crazy. That's the advantage with cards. At least you can put some abilities on cards versus just like keywords all over the place. I recently received a Kickstarter called Time of Legends, Joan of Arc, and got to play yesterday. Lots of stuff in that game. <laughs> I'll look that up after for sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, kind of. Yeah, the digital version for Gloomhaven, uh, being sad that they created it. It's okay. I like that I could just go play Gloomhaven by myself without setting up the entire game and shuffling up decks and all that stuff and getting it out. But I, it will never replace Gloomhaven playing the board game with friends. So when we've had friends come over, even after I started playing the digital game, uh, we've had buddies come over and we put out Gloomhaven and we play the whole thing. So you can see some of those videos on YouTube too uh, where we play through Gloomhaven. We have like 48 episodes of us playing all different Gloomhaven scenarios there and we're going to continue playing it. And I have Forgotten Circles, which we'll get to eventually too. Um, but yeah, I just like I, I can play a quick Gloomhaven game on the computer without, you know, setting up the game, it's, which is kind of cool. And play solo too, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, let's get back to it here. Uh, we're on day nine now. 
So I have this day or the next, and then it's over, I'll lose if I do not take down Drellin. And I only have to kill Drellin to win, but because of his stupid rule, Bog Ruler, his skill on him, I have to kill these Bog-type baddies first. So hopefully I can do this a little quicker this time, but I don't have my body count to heal up right now. So hopefully I can kill these two guys, get two heal from that. At least I start with nine, though. Uh, okay, so rolling my initiative puts me at four again after Drellin, which, I mean, is fine. Oh, I forgot to put this guy here with three. So he goes there. What did I do here? Yeah, that's right. That's right. All right. So let's take out... Let's take out... Let's try to take out Poison Guy again. Start here. Yeah. Okay. Round one. Drellin. Moving down. Three attack. Two defense. Yeah. Disgusting. All right. So he didn't really attack me for it. He got a couple bones, but he did get two defense dice, but only ones, which are not bad. Uh, and he'll hit me for one. Take away one health, which upticks my rage meter to 1.2. Uh, okay. Now my go. Oh, I forgot his effect die. Poison Enhancer. I don't have any poison, so that doesn't matter. Gotta remember that stupid die. Okay. Uh, now I go, sorry. And let's see here. I have five decks, so I can roll up to five dice. Let's try to knock Delin, Delin, uh, Drellin. I can maybe get rid of the poison keyword off this guy and make him useless using the cripple die. I'm actually going to downtick Axe Collector. I'll do two damage to this guy who's non-adjacent. Just before I forget, on my turn. So maybe I get that Clay Golem gone quick. He's only at three now. Uh, let me see if I can get Hardy going for a round. And then I'll roll two, two attack on... Mm, no, let's do two defense dice. Mm, no, 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 no. Let's do this better. Let's take away the Hardy. Let's try. Let's just go three attack. Yeah, three attack. We'll try to cripple this guy. Hopefully I get that. And then, I mean, cripple this guy and then uh, disable this guy. All right, got the disable. So... That will go, uh, is it disable? I don't remember all the names of these things. Yeah, disable, uh, the die goes on this guy, so he loses his skills, so he no longer has poison two, and he doesn't attack, normally he would just poison two me. So that's gone and exhausted. Uh, what else do we hear? The cripple didn't go through, so I will keep that. I'm not gonna spend it, you can always take dice back and not use them, uh, but I will apply uh, one bone to my backup plan, and then I will hit this guy for three. Um, okay. That was my turn. Uh, next, the bog frog will go. He's already adjacent to me, so he doesn't do any poison because he's disabled till the end of the battle. Then the clay golem is going to try to move around, move two to get to me. This is a space he wants to get to to attack, but uh, he's can't get me yet. Uh, let's go round two. So Drellin is going to roll three attack dice. Did I? I forgot to uptick on the attack I just did. So I'm at 1.4. Okay, uh, so Drellin is going to attack me for three. doesn't roll any attack dice. Don't forget his uh, tyrant die. All right, so he puts poison two on me, of course. Ugh. Okay. 
And then he hits me for three. I have no defense, no hardy. Ugh. But I lose three, so that is one, two, puts me to 2.0, which is not good. Uh, what attack was I on? Four? I don't know. Just bump the die, but hopefully that's what I'm at. Okay. Um, my go, I lose two at the start of my turn, which does nothing to the rage die since it's maxed out. I need to roll the bones to calm it down. Hmm. I will throw a Axe Collector die at this guy to hit him for two. I will roll the Hardy die, the Cripple die. I need to get defensed up here. Oh, this should down tick to one. I need to get, oh. Do two defense for sure, and then I'll do one attack, attacking the bog frog. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, I'm in trouble here. I don't know. Oh, they didn't get the hardy. That sucks. Didn't get the cripple. I will make these twos with my raider armor, so I'm at four. Ugh. So like a kobold didn't happen. Another bones. Oh, okay. Okay, we can do this. Uh, so the cripple will go back. I'll do the bones to calm down. So at the end of my turn, I'm not at 2.0 and my damage die goes back to 1.0. I'll put it to 1.8. Then, so that's spent. Then I will See, if I advance it to the second die, what do I get on here? 2.0 does nothing. 2.2 is one health. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, recover. At the start of your selected gearlock's turn, it heals number of HP, last entire battle. No, that's not it. What is this symbol? Oh, it's just use it instantly, heal any gearlock for that HP. So the next is 2 HP, 3 HP. Then I can execute a five point baddie or advance the die. Hmm, some heal could be good. Yeah, let's advance the die. And I just attacked, right? So I could apply the attack. Mm. So yeah, I'll do the advance and then I get this die. And then because I attack this turn, I'll up tick it. So you can do all this stuff in like whatever order, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so this goes back here. So I'm at 2.2. Oh, hopefully I can survive. So I didn't kill this guy. But that's okay, he doesn't really do anything right now. Uh, this is rough, okay. Uh, so then he'll go do nothing. Just sit there. The clay golem will go. He's going to move up two. Hopefully he doesn't break through any armor and misses. Mm, yep, he hits one, takes my armor down to three. And then we're going on to round three where Drellin will go first. Hope he doesn't turn me to poison three or I'm dead. Oh, uh, three dice. So he turns this to poison two, and he hits me for three, uh, which gets fully blocked. All my defense is gone. Okay, so I live, I take two from the poison, going down to one health left, so that will uptick me two. Uh, one, two. Hmm. Hmm. 
Okay, what to do here? Uh, I'm going to heal. I think it seems dumb, but I'll spend this to heal three. I need to cripple Drillin. I need Hardy so bad. <laughs> and I need to take out a baddie to get some body count going. But I also need my defense die. So defense dice are more important. I'll roll one and I'll try to take out the clay golem. No, that would ex that would bring my dice down. Yeah, I might be okay with that. I'll probably exhaust the die if I get a hit. So clay golem, here we go. All right, got Hardy for one round. Eh. I did cripple Drellin, so he'll be rolling one less attack die. I'll uptick this to two defense. I'll uptick this to one defense using my Raider armor. And I did get the one I need, which exhausts it. So now I can only roll up to three attack dice, but I do kill the Clay Golem. And because I killed him, body count goes up one. And do I worry about healing yet? I will not. Does it matter? No, I will do it. Yeah, I'll take it down to one on my turn to heal up one. So Bog Frog goes, does nothing. Round four, no diagonal move or attacking. No, you can't attack diagonally. Um, yeah, poison is disgusting in this game, super disgusting. Like you can get up to poison three on you and that is three damage on the first turn, ticks down to two, two damage on the next turn, then ticks down to one and one damage. So it's six damage total on a poison three, which is gross. And that's why this guy's so bad because he keeps resetting if he rolls, the, he puts either a poison two on you or sets an existing poison to three which is gross, which is why he, that's why I went so crazy on health for this run, um, just to survive. Okay, so round four, Drellin, here we go. He's crippled, so he's only rolling two attack dice. His defense are already taken up there. And he'll roll his stupid die here, which makes this poison three. Oh my God. Uh, then rolls two bones though, so at least I don't lose any defense or get hit. So dumb. Okay, uh, then I will go take three poison worth of damage. And that ticks me down to two here. So at the start of my next turn I will die unless I get a health somehow. Ugh. Okay, so now I am going to... Oh, hardy, 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 hardy. I am hardy. So I only take one from that, so I'll put two back. Yeah, I'm hardy for one round. So that was done last turn. So now on this turn, I lose this. Yes, that will keep me around a little longer. That's huge, actually. Okay, uh, then... Hmm. Uh... Poison armor, doesn't do anything this guy, but maybe I can get Axe Collector going. So I'll roll that. I'll roll one of my defense dice. Take it back out of the slot here, so there's two there. Maybe get something better on the defense. I will then roll, I can only roll up to three attack. So I will do that. And all on the Bog Frog. But maybe I can get some bones. Okay, so this is my only bonus. But I will uptick it to one. I will put on some poison armor. No, I'll just put it back. Because poison doesn't do anything. Poison has no effect on Drellin, so that sucks. But I did get three attack, which will overkill the bog frog, which does raise my body count by one. He is gone. Bog Frog goes to the one point baddie dead pile there. This guy's gone. So now I can start hitting Drellin at least. Uh, but I will use my body count right away. 
uh, down to zero to go up one HP. Uh, okay. And nobody to go after. So now round five. Drellin will go, roll two attack dice and a stupid die. So poison two, but I already have poison two, so it just keeps it set the same way. He'll then attack for two, gets blocked by my two defense there. So I don't take anything. That's good. I will go, lose two. Poison will tick down to one, I'm down to three health. I'll roll my max three attack die and two defense. I'll take this one back actually. And attack Drellin. All right. So I'll uptick these to two defense. I will hit Drellin for three, taking away two of his defense and only hitting him for one. Womp womp. Okay, uh, then that ends that. We go into the fatigue rounds. So we each take a true damage at the start of our turn. That's not good. I'm not going to outlast this guy. Uh, then he will go, rolling two attack, two defense, and his crappy die. Can you do anything with your rage die? No, this rage die. Oh, actually. Crap, would that have reset? I think once I spend this one, it's, it's gone, like it's done. I don't think I set that one back up, but I could be wrong. I could totally be wrong. That would be bad, but because I could be getting extra bones. Uh, so he turns this to a poison three. So I'm going to get killed at the start of my turn anyway. He gets one defense and two attack, which gets blocked. And bones doesn't matter for him. And then, start of my turn, three poison, and I'm dead. Okay, so we got one more chance on day 10. I will recover back up. Let's get this set up here and try one more time. Maybe I'll get different baddies. Um, maybe Drellin won't get so lucky with his die. So nine HP, that is only eight, nine, one more. This is gone. This is back to 1.0. This is here. This is here. This goes here. Like maybe I didn't do the right build for my guy, but uh, the cripple die goes back. This is gone. This is gone. Back to round one. So Drellin is going to go back up to H 8 HP. Okay. Lane one. Going at five. Okay, then I will search for bog type baddies. Okay, bog pool, this is a little better. Uh, day 10, doesn't matter for baddie queue. Yeah, I ignore it. So um, this is the last chance, last chance of this guy. Uh, so this guy will come in at three and three health. And he's ranged, so he's gonna go hide up here. He's gonna be shooting poison one around, which is bad because he could poison me and then this guy can roll a stupid enhancer die and make it a three right after, so that could be bad. Um, and then the next bog type baddie is not that guy. 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 Ugh. So let's shuffle it up here and find another one. Now let's cut it up. All right. Let's see here, what do we get? Nope, and nope, and bog frog. Four. And going at three, which is after this guy. I will roll my die. Four, still not before Drellin. I need to get before Drellin, that's what I think needs to happen, but that's okay. Uh, then I will start Start here. Let's get serious here. Axe collector. Hmm. Okay. 
Poison die. Uh, okay, I think we're good. Let's try to remember everything here. Take a swig of the coffee. You need to take, gonna, gonna need to take out the range unit. Don't get trapped. Is there anything that blocks or removes poison? There is the picket guy I normally play with has a repost die that you can use to, you put it in your active slot, then you spend it when, on an enemy turn when they're hitting you to ignore the hits and any effects they do. So it's like a one turn, like, you know, don't hit me. And that works great against this guy. But uh, yeah, maybe tantrum I didn't build correctly. Maybe I needed more health. Maybe I should have, like the problem is spending my body count on one of those previous turns. Like now it's down to nothing and it's not as useful. And now I've run out of axes too, so. I need to be careful with my raider armor. Like maybe I need to save bones and then use that to get this up to three. Cause it'd be nice to roll against this guy. Okay. Uh, let's start it up here. Drellin. Lose one. The problem is it's easy to get trapped in this too because moving costs two decks instead of one. Okay. So Drellin moves. Here he goes. Big hit. Gonna hurt. Yeah, there's nowhere I could move to stay away from Drellin from getting hit the first turn anyway. Uh, and his die. All right, poison enhancer, sweet. Doesn't do anything. There's no poison on me. Uh, he gets one defense, and but he hits me for four. But thankfully, one, two, three, four, will uptick my rage meter and piss me off. One, two, three, and four. And now I could just spend that on my turn to execute this guy, no questions asked, which would be sweet. Okay, my go. Uh, let's do that. We'll spend this, gone, uh, execute a level one patty, because I am ticked. This guy's gone, uh, damage is gone, die is gone, so he will not be poison twoing me later. One bog guy off the board. Uh, I get a body count for killing him, which could be a health I could use later. Or right now. Uh, okay, let's roll some dice. So five decks. Hardy two, I need so bad. If I can get a hardy two, it might be a little different here. Yeah, I can't move far enough away to get away from this guy. Uh, maybe I can get axe collector. Hmm. Well, we're rolling two defense. Attack are pointless because it won't do anything to this guy. And you can roll some axe collectors. Cripple Drellin. Let's try. All right, so I have no target. Okay. Hardy two, great. So for two rounds, any damage I take on a turn from like this baddie's turn or this baddie's turn will all be reduced to one. Poison armor two, which is, I think it only matters for adjacent baddies. So, but I don't want to move all the way up to this guy. Oh, wrong sheet, wrong sheet. Uh, poison armor, when hit by an adjacent baddie, you may place number of poison effect die on that baddie. But I need to get the axe collector, like one side on this. Uh, yeah, it's only one. I can get axe collector die upticked. So I will save that and not use it. I'm gonna try to get that. Um, I didn't attack, so there's no rage die happening here. I will heal up one from my body count. Uh, I missed on this. So let's get the cripple back, that sucks. I'll uptick this to two. And I will... No, I need to take keep the defense. I'll uptick that to one with my raider armor. Okay, uh, then this guy goes, poison ones me. 
all the way from there, which sucks. Round two, drill in, rolling three attack is die and one defense. This guy, man. So three defense, turns this to poison two, not poison three at least, and attacks for three, which just takes away the three shield I had. Um, okay, my turn. Poison two, but because of Hardy, it will only take one, and I'll down tick this for one more round. I lost a health, doesn't matter for rage. Okay, let's do two defense die. Try to get this axe collector thing going. Try to cripple Drellin. And let's... Hmm. Should I move up to the bog pole? Yeah, let's do that. We'll move here. So that is two decks. So now I only have three. So I have to... Uh, I'm not going to roll this because I'm not adjacent to anybody to cripple them. So I will... Hmm. Maybe I can just get a bones off this. So f oh no, I only have three. I only have three. I only have three. Because, yeah, a, de a dex is two dex to move in this stupid swamp. Don't you reduce to one damage, or does it only reduce damage after blocking? You might, you probably are right. I think it's defense dice first. But I think like you have armor or shield or whatever. Uh, let me check that actually. So let's go too many bones. Defense, dice, or hardy. Um, Let's check the FAQ. Yeah, that's tough. Uh, it does matter though, right? It says, when resolving thick skin, which normally adds some defense, do you remove defense dice first? Does it negate the, the first number of attack dice or just the first number of total incoming damage? Defense dice first, reduce the total incoming damage by number. Always remove defense dice first when resolving your turn. After that, reduce the total number of damage by the number associated with thick skin. I'm assuming it's very similar. Think about it is using effects that do true damage. Uh, no. Let's see if I can find Hardy in the FAQ. Nope. A baddie, uh, so it says, uh, doesn't matter where the damage comes from as long as the damage received during the same turn will be reduced to one. Um, however, with gear locks, any defense dice used to defend yourself with put in active slot. Uh, it will reduce the total number of defense dice you can roll. What? If you attack a baddie with hardy that also has defense dice, I'm pretty sure you always remove defense dice first. So if you get three swords against him and he has one defense on his chip, the defense die, 
would first reduce the total attack from three down to two. Then you would deal the rest of the body. However, Hardy would make it only be one. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. All right. So, yeah, I think I did that right then. Yeah, defense dice first. Yeah, seems right. Which sucks, but... <laughs> okay. So it's my turn. I move. That's two decks. Three left. I'm trying to get an axe collector roll so I can toss an axe at this guy. Or some bones. And maybe I can build up to axe collector to max out my axe collector die, maybe. We'll see. Alright, so I did not get bones. I did not get the axe. Poison armor. Nope, we'll save that. These will uptick to two each. Okay, now this guy goes, poison one's me. I'm already at poison one. No big deal. Uh, then round three, Drellin will go. He will move. I'll say he moves here to attack me. And then he just rolls three attack dice and his Tyrant die. All right, nothing else I'm missing here. All right, so changes my poison to two with his stupid effect die. He bones out on two of his attack dice and then only one, which will just reduce uh, one of my defense dice down, which is good. That's good. He got a nice weak hit. Uh, okay, my turn. Uh, because I'm hardy, I'll take a poison two, but only reduce one. And then this hardy will go away at the end of my turn, so I'll just take it off now. Okay. Then. Hmm. I will use two decks, four decks to move. And I only can roll one die. I feel like I could try to disable him to get rid of poison. I could cripple doesn't do anything for him. I can make give myself poison armor. And maybe that hits him back for poison too. That would be awesome. Let's try that. Yes, I got it. So I have poison two armor, and since he's adjacent to me now, when he... Oh, he doesn't attack, though. Maybe I won't do that. So he doesn't attack. He just puts poison on me. So that does... Poison armor is useless. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Never mind. Cancel that. How do we do it here? Just do an attack die. I'll just try to attack this guy. And we hit him for one. Not the greatest, but... All right. He will go apply poison one. I'm already at poison one. Whatever. Round four. Drellin. One, two, and then attack for three. And using his stupid die. Oh, nice. Bones out again. So he puts me back at poison two. Uh, bones on two. And then one gets through and knocks this away. So I don't take any hits. Perfect. I will go lose two from poison. Go down to one. I only have two health left. Ugh. Hmm. Roll a defense, roll a cripple, and roll three attack, I guess, on, like, I don't know what to do here, I'm so weak, on the bog pole. Oh, I did not get the cripple. That sucks. Uh, but two bones. Nope. I need the cripple. One bones. I'll turn this to two defense on my raider armor. And two attack. At least I take out, took out the um, bog pole. So now I can actually hit Drellin, but I mean, I don't see that really happening. We'll see. He's got three defense on him. All right, round five. 
Drellin. Three attack dice. Stupid tyrant die. Turns into two poison, which will kill me at the start of my turn. Uh, yeah, I uh, dead end with this. Ah, poison. Okay, and then he hits me for three, which would tick this down and get rid of this. Start of my turn, poison two, and I'm dead. Couldn't do it. Uh, oh, body count. Uh, yeah, thank you. Actually, I will survive. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, that's what I was trying to do. Uh, so body count, I would have spent it on the same turn. So yes, sorry. Poison, tick down to one. I have one health left. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I almost missed that. Uh, okay, so we're still alive, but... <laughs> uh, okay, so start of my turn here. Uh, what can we do? Four attack, one defense. Hmm. I need to like get to the recoup, but uh, I don't know if I'm playing this right here. Let's try the cripple and we'll get rid of an attack. All right, here we go. So I finally got the cripple. That would have been nice like four turns ago. Uh, okay. And two defense. Three attack gets rid of his defense, but he'll just get to roll those again next turn. Uh, okay, so we're in the fatigue rounds. And I'll just die? Yeah, I just die. So I lose my one at the beginning, he loses one. And then that's it. So that's it! I couldn't do it! Just didn't go my way. I don't know. This guy, Tantrum with Poison. I thought I had enough going for health. Maybe I should have focused more on this rage die, trying to get health off that. I, I should have, like I had a full body count going in the first time. I thought that would be enough to heal me up. But losing that three health in that first one, yeah, I just couldn't get through. And then when I finally start attacking on Drellin, he's got armor, right? Every time, so I barely get anything through when I start attacking him. And you think like four attack dice would be good. But then also I can't move in the bog, so my, my um, Axes don't really do much. You know? That's it for Too Many Bones. That's it for this run with Tantrum Solo. I will be doing more solo runs throughout the week here live on Twitch. Uh, trying out some other gear locks. And trying out some other tyrants. So make sure you follow on Twitch to see that. And subscribe on YouTube to see all the videos after the fact. But either way, thanks a lot for being here. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.